Welcome to Face the Facts. Good to see you here all once again. Welcome to show number 101. Well, not Sports on 101, show number 101. Um, I am Nick Face. It's good to see you all here again. We have the invisible ghost of Phil Healy joining us today. You know, he'll be back in a second. And then we have um, Tom Smith also joining us here. We just celebrated our 100th episode, which was last time that we were here. So I want to just say um, thank you again for continuing to watch and continuing to uh, enjoy Face the Facts. We enjoy doing it. And it's uh, it's actually kind of fun to do it more virtual because it, it, it's quick to do. You don't have to gather everything up. You don't have to go to you know the studio and everything. So it's worked out, I think, better for everybody's schedule purposes to do this kind of virtual setting and everything. Uh, on today's episode, uh, there is Phil. He's he's in and out. Um, I'm questioning the Boston Celtics sweatshirt, but you know that's life. Uh, we have Tom down here shaking his head. Uh, we'll talk about the uh, Bruins. Uh, definitely talking about the Patriots today. I mean, wow, what a week it's been for them. I feel so much better about the direction this team is finally headed. And uh, the Red Sox, we'll talk a little bit about them. Uh, I want to start today's show off with uh, the New England Patriots. Boy, have they been busy. Uh, back the Brinks truck up. Here it comes because you got what quite a team right now. Got quite a team. So far this week, the Patriots have brought back Kyle Van Noy. They have signed two fantastic uh, tight ends, best tight ends out in the market, Hunter Henry and Jonah Smith which is a wonderful, wonderful addition for a, a position that has been just completely flawed and obsolete since Gronk and Hernandez days. You have some, a, a couple of new receivers, uh, one of which was, his name is Brown, or Bourne, excuse me. He came from Jimmy Garoppolo's offense from the 49ers, so that's a good signing there. You have um, from the Raiders, why can't I think of his name? Can you help me there, Tom? Is it Nelson? Uh it's I know Nelson Aguilar. Nelson Aguilar. That's what it is. Yeah. So um, that's a that's a huge addition right there. Um, they still have money to spend, Tom. Yeah. Are I you mean, feeling better about the direction of this team right now versus what it was a week ago? Well, it kind of makes you think. Like, what what are they? What are they trying to aim at? What, what are they? What are they going for here? Are they are they getting targets to entice a, a quarterback to you know want to sign over here and just have Cam as an option, or do they think Cam has it in him to be able to work with these targets to be able to get the Patriots back into the playoffs? So I mean, the the move the moves kind of make you think. Um, I do like so the are you signing. Speculating there's something big happening. I. I think so. I mean, the the coming over the receiver coming over from the Niners. I mean, that kind of makes you think maybe 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 Jimmy G comes back next season. I mean, who, it, it could mean it could mean anything. I, I like the signing of uh, Henry and I like the signing of Aguilar. Um, I think those two will be a big help to the offense. Mm -hmm. um, it was the a big one, defensive the, signing too, and I I'm sorry that I'm gonna. While I ask Phil how his um, his overall thoughts and how the week has been for the Patriots, I'm going to get his name as well, too. I want to give the full list of everybody that's been signed this week so we don't miss anybody out. But, Phil, um, I'm shocked. Yeah, well, you know what? I, we had an idea in our head, and I think we talked about it at least at the end of one of the shows uh, when we were talking about the Patriots these last two episodes. We're like, you know what? I am feeling – we were feeling – optimistic in the sense like well there's a, a sense of wonder like because it's wide open because it's like the wild west in a way and they did that they kind of went out there and did their like bill kind of said you know what we are pretty bad <laughs> or we could get a lot better we could get a lot better i i didn't do what i needed to do now you know the gloves are off i'm going to do this and i kind of agree i think well it's weird because they signed cam newton for like and he he got paid pretty uh pretty well pretty decently for that. So, I mean, mm -hmm. who knows if they're going to hold on to him and just try to go like a kind of run, like a real, like two tight end or even three tight end set and run the ball a lot and have like Aguilar and uh, uh, it was a Jones or Brown. Who's the other receiver from uh, San Francisco? Born. Is that Brown? Uh, Born? Born. 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 Born or Brown. Born. Um, yeah. here, here are the names that we have back. There are about 20,000 20, signings. Yeah. 
basically. <laughs> yeah, uh, John o. Smith, tight end. Hunter Henry, tight end. Nelson Aguilar, wide receiver. He came from the Raiders. Uh, Hunter Henry from the Titans. Uh, no, Hunter Henry from the Chargers. Uh, Jonah Smith from the Titans. Um, you have linebacker Matthew Judon. Judon. Uh, you have defensive tackle Davon Gotrich. You have cornerback Jalen Mills. You have Ted Karras back at center. And you have Kyle Van Noy so far back uh, D end. I didn't hear about the, Kyle Van Noy. Did that just happen? I'm sorry to That interrupt. just happened yeah, last night. That's, that's uh, great. David Andrews Sweet. is a name that's that awesome. uh, I think hmm. a lot of people would like back. They've given him the, the uh, what do you call it, the brewski treatment, the go and see what's out there and then kind of come back and yeah. see what's going there. So um, I don't know. I think it would be really cool if you have David Andrews back because he's an anchor of that team, uh, especially somebody that knows the system. And he's one of the better centers in all of football. You know, he's obviously coming off that that blood clot thing. That was very scary uh, for him. Yeah, well, that was crazy. But, I mean, the, um, only, the only downside is losing uh, Tooney. Tooney, Tooney. Yeah, to actually, yeah. and that was actually a great pickup by uh, the the Chiefs. As as much as I hate to say it, like they. Actually, I mean, they they paid him with crap load of money though. They paid him like thirty. No, they did. They paid him like thirty two million. And but for they desperately for a lineman. That's 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 uh, it is, too much. It's insane. But they desperately needed him. Yeah, I mean, it's you know what I mean. Yeah, they did. I mean, it showed in the in the Super Bowl. Yeah, even if you they, don't have. So I guess I want to I want to uh, speculate here. So all these players and additions here, I would absolutely give them an A on, on what they've done so far. The tight end thing is just it's, it's awesome. Hunter Henry is that huge. Was, yeah. That's a huge addition. And don't discount Smith. I mean, that's a huge yeah. part of the Titans system right there, too. I just so I don't really know much one A and one B together. Actually, I don't know as that much about Smith either. I don't know much about combo. Smith, but I just know Henry. I don't know much about that Smith. Could I just end know up Henry's being really good. A better combo than Gronk and Hernandez back in the day. Yeah. Could be. I want to be optimistic here on it. But all these moves, this doesn't fit a Cam Newton system, right, guys? Uh, it it might. It depends how they might keep it. The thing is that who do you have who goes over the top? That's the thing. You don't really have well, I mean, maybe Aguilar or like uh Bourne. Maybe. I don't yep. know. I'm not too familiar with Bourne. Don't forget I mean, Edelman. They, I mean, he can come yeah, back and true. He can be healthy. Yeah. I mean, uh, you no, don't it's true. With, with I mean, Cam, you don't really have you don't really need the use for a, a deep threat. He can't really throw too deep, like well, we that, talked about uh, last yeah. week. You want him throwing it deep. No. And I, I maybe they're I don't tailoring. think Cam Newton will be a quarterback on, on the first game. Week one, I don't see it. I think he's your backup. I smell something creative being done with Cam Newton. That's an expensive I backup. Smell, I smell either a release or I think that they're going to utilize him in some other shape or fashion. This has the writing of Jimmy Garoppolo all over it right here. Something's going to go on. And here's what I'm thinking. Mm -hmm. I think that there's a three-team trade going on, and I think it's San Francisco, Houston, and the Patriots. Hear me out. Gilmore, I think, is going to be one of those people that you're going to see gone. I think it's going to take some couple round picks, whatever the heck it is. I think uh, Nikhil Harry's name's getting thrown out as well, too. Hold on, hold on. Let me do a spit take. I make that move. I I make that move. I don't care what it is. I don't care if you're giving up your first round first round pick that you have in this round upcoming for the draft you make that move i'd be happy with deshaun watson i'd be happy with garoppolo i'd be happy well, with either i I'd do take not watson, want I think, Newton yeah. as my quarterback i'm done i think fans are done i think it's an outrage if he's even on the field week one no way no how is this team they're not settling for what just happened let's be honest they're bullshit right now they are pissed Tom Brady just won that Super Bowl. He stuck a finger in their face, and Belichick is not having any of it. This is the most money he's ever spent in free agency. So you know what? He's going to go out, and he'll sign players. I think the, the money that he gave to some of the receivers here is stupid money, but that's okay because you're trying to make a solution to that abysmal season that you had last year. I think Cam is just a protection. 
just in case something happens, they have them. That's my thought. I don't know. I'm in agreement. I mean, that's that's what I'm hearing. I, I, I smell there's much more to come here. The only, the only thing, the only other thing I can really think of is like they, they sign a better quarterback and they use, uh, Cam more as like a James White option if he can catch the ball because I'm hearing what? I'm hearing rumors that James White could go to Tampa. I, I'm oh hearing no! So yeah, I think I I, 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 I do oh. think I do think I do think Cam is be, is signed as a security, but I also think that they might just use him as a different option when they need to. Oh, I love James. Because he, he is he is he is kind of a goal line quarterback, really. I mean, he you saw it fit the Patriots system anymore. He doesn't. He's much he, more effective with Brady in Tampa. I like James White. Don't get yeah. me wrong. Oh, I love him, man. It, it doesn't work here in the system unless you have Watson or you have Garoppolo. Like Garoppolo, yeah. That's well, also, the only way I, I see that working. You don't win that uh, comeback Super Bowl if you don't have James White against uh, the Falcons. No. You don't. You don't win that Super Bowl. But um, well, yeah, we man, also but, had a quarterback that could throw the ball and get it to him. Yeah, I know. But if you look at like you watch that Super Bowl again, if you can, it's like James White is everywhere. He's doing his damnedest to get every last yard. Um, and it's actually appropriate. He, I think he was the one who got the last uh, score too, which was which yes, was he good. Did. He deserved it. Yeah. Yes, he did. Um, yeah. You know what? I. Um, Man, I don't know if they're going to get another guy, but I love what I love what's happening. How can you not love what's going on? How can you not love it? This is like, and when has this happened? Have we ever been involved? Back at this point last year, yeah. we're talking about Brady as a Buccaneer. I think on this day or something. Oh, like probably, that. yeah, probably. The first year of tampering, yeah. So the I, first day. I think this is a complete one hundred and eighty, a move that's in the right direction, a move that's welcomed, and hopefully it's for the best. So that's our take here on the Patriots. More to come, folks. More to come. So uh, keep your eyes and ears fully on uh, fully on the Patriots because they're pulling all kinds of rabbits out of that hat. So let's keep let's keep those uh, tricks are for kids kind of uh, example going. I would love to see more. So I, I still think we'll see some sort of a big move. Um, let's go to the Bruins next, uh, Tom. Um, I'm 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 not happy. Wait, do you, wait, do you need me for this? Do you guys need me for this? No, you, you need you need you need to be in here for this too. <laughs> oh, all right, all right. Well, I, I need we need you here to listen to my thoughts, Phil, so that you can oh. come back in and Yeah, of course. And then just <laughs> obviously no listen. I know you've read my blog, you read my blog on it. Oh yeah. Just be yeah. Dr. Phil. <laughs> yeah. Help help us through this dilemma that's going on. How does it make you feel? Um <laughs> I'm fed up. I'm tired. Um not pleased with the performance of the Bruins right now. And something's gotta change. Yeah, I mean, they're not as offensive as they were when the season first started. I don't I don't know what's happening. I don't know if it's the fact that Rask isn't playing right now, isn't able to play, isn't uh, – I don't know if it's that they just don't want to show up. Um, they had a tough – I wouldn't actually. I wouldn't even say it was a tough loss against Pittsburgh. They kind of gave up after they scored the first goal in that first game of the back-to-back. Um, I mean, I, I've said it the past what two, three episodes, and I'll say it again: Halak just isn't getting the job done. Um, if they can't be offensive, Halak's not going to be able to. You happy with with uh, Darth Vader in that? Yeah, I like him. I would take Darth Vader. I, I, mean, we, I, I texted game. you. I texted you that or whatever. Vladar. Um, I text. I texted you during the game on that, on the second half of the back to back, and uh, I mean, like I said, if if Hawk doesn't come back, I I wouldn't be too disappointed with Vladar as a backup option. I mean, obviously, I'd like to see more, but um, only giving up one goal against the offense of the Penguins, even though the Penguins aren't doing too hot this year, I and mean, that's. That's pretty good in your first NHL start, really. Um, yeah, I, yeah, a lot. It was a it was a boost. The thing that I'm looking for for the next game here for the Bruins is to see the response. Okay, now you got the Sabers. I think it's safe to say that if they lose the next two against the Sabers, uh, the team should be crucified. 
<laughs> Sorry, don't need to be that harsh. But no, I agree. It's an embarrassment if the, if something happens, if they do not get the wins for this. Buffalo is the one of the worst teams in hockey, if not the worst the team. They just fired their coach. There's no more excuses here. Yeah, no, uh, they they have to come out. I'll light a fire them. under them if I need to. But they again, have to come Jack and Brick, I'm getting real fed up on the broadcast here. It's all, it's just all wonderful to them. Like, it's one game. They got so excited. Oh, this big win here. Let's see if it builds. You got Buffalo next. Even if you win the next two, I'm not satisfied yet. Believe me, you need to show up and you need to start putting the puck in the net. Because if you don't, you're going home early. And I'm not pleased if that happens. Yeah, I mean, even Pittsburgh's not another, doing that another great. Another lost window here with, with Bergeron and Martian and Raft and all these other guys that you, you don't want to have to see that happen. Yeah, I mean, even Pittsburgh isn't that great. So losing that that first game of the back-to-back was kind of disappointing. Um, I still look at Pittsburgh personally. I think Pittsburgh has a better team right now than the Bruins. Oh, I mean, on paper, the the, the Penguins are absolutely stacked. I, I mean, you look, you look at the, the guys that they have on their roster, and it's like, how are these guys not, like, undefeated? That How are they not getting the job done? How are they not able to – and I, I mean, for Pittsburgh, I think it's the goaltending. If I was a Penguins fan, I would not be happy with the goaltenders that I have. Yeah. But I mean, that's a whole nother, that's a whole nother topic to talk about and a whole nother area of conversation. But um, yeah, I mean, I think I, I'm, I'm not liking how Halak's playing right now. Uh, it's just I think not... there's more to the story than just Halak. I think there's more to it. I know that you're not a big fan of Halak, and I understand that. But I think my much the area of concern for me much more is line two and three. Well, I mean it's that too. I it's um, but at the same time, I'm done do you... with DeBrusk. I'm done with uh, Bjork. I'm done with Krejci. I'm done with Charlie Coyle. Not put. I'm now. I'm calling him out. I'm gonna call. I'll call a spade a spade. Bjork, Bjork's not, not even producing. On the line. Sit your ass down. I'm sorry. If I York, have to York's be told, not even on the on I have second to go tell line. Him, I'll do it. I don't mind. You upstairs. Bring the Providence friggin' bus to the game and start unloading. Carson Coleman, you're in. Uh, you're in. I, I don't care. Bjork's not These even on the second line. Bjork's on under their grass. So Bjork's freaking a- bad. And I think Cassidy is the right guy here. I think he's right. I think if Cassidy were the coach of the Bruins, I mean the, of the Celtics, excuse me. The Celtics would probably be in first place. So I, I appreciate the fire, the care, the compassion, the pride that goes into a coach who is trying to get the most out of his players. Yeah, uh, Cassidy definitely has the right attitude as for a, for a hockey coach. I've been hearing um, his name for... and they're blaming Cassidy. How can you blame him? It's not his fault. I mean, you, right? if you was. If you listen to the stuff, you know, if you listen to how he, how he speaks in his press conferences and what he says about the guys and everything, it's, he, he, he doesn't even know what's going on half the time. He doesn't know why, why they're playing the way they are. Um, Do you think the players have lost any sort of respect or any sort of, oh, I'm going to, you know, play as hard as I can for Cassidy. Do you think he's lost the room in a way? I don't think it's, I I, I don't know. I don't, I don't think, think it's Cassidy. So. I don't think it's. I don't think it's Cassidy. I think. Uh, I think it might be a little bit of the management. I think. Sweeney? I think. I think they're trying to. I mean, I liked. I like Neely. I like Sweeney um, as management, but I think the team's trying to tell them something. I think the team's trying to tell them that they need. They need some pieces on the team to help out. Uh, the team is really. The team is really young, and Cassidy's doing all he can to either bring up guys to help the team out or some bench guys when he needs to or whatnot. But I mean, how, how do you go from scoring one goal against a vet of a Vesna contending goaltender, such as Halak and to helping a rookie goalie in his first NHL start, uh, get his first win in his first start. 
against the so same that's team. That's the big mystery going on right now. That's the big mystery. You know, um, the other thing like, that I think should be of concern is the defense of the Bruins. They're out more guys. You know, you still haven't seen Kevin Miller, Brandon Carlo still in concussion protocol. Now we just lost um, uh, Tenorti. So that's another one that that's you just that, that's not there. So they're relying upon, uh, you know, your um, Vakaninans and you're relying upon your Cliftons and. Thankfully, John Moore hasn't had to slide in any more time. Um, they uh, elected to go without John Moore. They actually went to Stephen Camper the other night, and I think Camper deserves the spot in the lineup right now. Every time he's played, they win. So yeah. I'll gladly give that to him. I'll gladly give that spot to Camper. Somebody that wants it, who grinds, that will get the job done. Tenorti's um, a tough loss. Tenorti's definitely a tough loss. Um, to the team yeah. right now. That's a, That was a bit. That was a. I don't know how long he's going to be out. That was a brutal. That was a brutal hit. I don't know if it was a game misconduct kind of hit, but I, it, I, what I didn't like on that from the last game was that the Bruins had five minutes basically to score and nothing got done. Nothing. Uh, I mean, they were fortunate enough that they were able to pull out the win. And I mean, Vladar, you know, stood on his head really. Um, oh, one of the saves he made in that game, he had a stick save. It was phenomenal. So I might I might go right back to him tonight. I would. Against a team like Buffalo? Are you R- kidding me? Ride him. Yeah. Ride him. Against a team like Buffalo? So, absolutely. I want to see a change. I want to see an eruption. Not a volcanic eruption. I want to see an eruption from the Bruins. I want to see a response. I want five, six goals. Just completely dominate. Show them. Send a message. Send a message yeah. that we're going to get our shit together and get it all figured out. That's what I want to see. All right, Phil. Your hey, turn. Oh, no. Hey, Tom's gone. Oh, man. Where do we start with the green team? Where do we start? No, they're one and two coming out of the break, though. They went in with a decent four game uh, winning streak and then. Uh, yeah, they had a, they played well against the jazz. They played, they actually, they played well against Brooklyn too. Last time we talked, which was a week ago. So it's only been two other games they played, um, against, you know, uh, Utah jazz. Oh, actually, no. Yeah, no, uh, three games. I'm sorry. They played, uh, Houston, which they kind of demolished and, uh, they played against, uh, the Utah jazz who they were close, played a close game and then they lost. Uh, they a dumb game. They lost to uh, Cleveland last night. I mean, it, all right, it was a back to back, sure, but from what I saw, it just looked it just looked sloppy and just dumb and just had uh, like bad decisions and they just didn't know what they were doing. And their defense was almost the, uh, the biggest, sporadic the biggest at best. Telltale sign to me from last night. I'll be honest, I haven't paid much attention to it. I no. just get the report from what the heck's going on because to me. I don't know if I want to spend my time watching a team like that, but everybody has their thing, which is totally cool. And that's totally, uh, that's totally awesome too. Yeah. Daniel Tice. That, that should, that game last night that he played should have resulted in a release today. <laughs> uh, he had some decent, yeah. You know what? I, I think he they should stop playing him as the big man. I know they like to do that when they go small, and I understand it. Yep. And that gives them versatility because I really like Daniel Tice. And when he was really playing, he was adding some offensive game to it. And I he was getting a little better, like a mid range and just like garbage cleanup points down below. I think it's great. And uh, but you know what? I don't want him shooting threes. I know that's what they like. Hey, they like the big man to spread the floor, but I'm like, you know what? If he can't do it, don't force it. And if he can, yep. if they're trying to get him to do it. Okay, I understand, but no, just you know what? Stay with Robert Williams is so good, is getting so much better at each game. He's getting much I better passing, defending. Yeah, he needs haven't you seen it? Starting lineup, I agree. Yeah, or at least, and you know, it seems like he's getting more and more minutes as they go. And I'm actually resigned myself. I think you know, I don't think they're going to win anything this year. I think they're going to make a. They could. They have a potential to make a deeper, uh, not maybe get back to the Eastern Conference Finals, maybe get to the second round and get ousted by a Philly or uh, New Jersey. But I think what you do now, or like as far as the trade deadline, and Danny just said this, 
uh, I, I don't know if he said it more than once, but I know he said it in an interview in the last like week. And I think I, I forget if I brought it up to you guys or if it was just talking to a friend, but you know, he had mentioned like any trade he makes, it, it's a trade for the future. And I, you know, I think that's what you need to, I mean, technically the future is five minutes from now, but I mean, I think what, you know, getting at is seasons down the line, which if you get a Harrison Barnes or you get another, like a couple, you know, a couple people to add to your, uh, your bench, what was it? Um, the Milwaukee Bucks just last night got PJ Tucker from the um, uh, Houston, who was a great, like three point, I, I believe a, uh, still a great three point shooter. And he's a veteran guy. And it will be great off their bench. And we'll see how Milwaukee does. I don't really have as much faith in Milwaukee. I, I think it's a I think it's a Philly and New Jersey race. But Milwaukee's not a they're not a bad team. It's just I don't think they can I don't think they'll be there crunch time to do what they need to do. But who they'll, maybe they'll prove me wrong. We'll see. But yeah, I don't know. We'll see what kind of splash they make uh, for the I, trade. I, I, I'm still in the camp. I, I'll still be in the camp where I think the only way the Celtics are going to change is with a new direction. I think it starts with Ainge and it starts with uh, Stevens. Um, yeah. I'm sorry to say it. They could be nice No, you people. might be right. They you might be right. They've some good things here. But if you're going to look at something to change, I don't know if you want to be super drastic and say Jalen Brown, market smart, just change it up here. Let's do a trade and get some new fresh direction going. Uh, trade tape. I don't know. But well, I, I think the yeah. most immediate fix, if you seriously believe, not just saying you, Bill, but if the Celtics no, no, no. direction, if they seriously believe in Tatum and Brown, that's fine. If they feel like that's great, then you got to add to it. You got to give them the right tools. But yeah. clearly, something's not going right with the direction of this team. I don't know if it's the players don't care as much or don't have the fire or the compassion or the heart. I don't see that. I don't hear that. I don't see the players jumping through hurdles for other players. I don't hear, oh, I just love playing for Brad Stevens. Hmm. I just can't wait to go show Coach Brad, whoa, here we go. We're going to win this for Brad. I, I don't hear that. I hear that for Alex Cora. I hear that for Bill. And I hear that a little bit with Bruce Cassidy. Stevens has been our coach here since 2013. Nothing. Zero. I don't yeah. hear one thing for him. And I think you won't that hear that in the NBA problem. except for maybe Phil Jackson and or uh, Popovich. Right. I think those maybe are the only the two, though. NBA coaches the NBA. are a dime a dozen. Maybe it doesn't matter from him. I don't uh, know. I don't know if they don't matter, but I think like that's just the mentality of I want to play for that person. It's more, and I would even argue that a lot of people don't necessarily always want to play for Belichick as per example of what happened this past season, where it's like no one, I mean, oh, and, I don't even, and I don't even think people necessarily always wanted to play for Brady either. I think maybe, oh. I think you could add like, yeah, sure. I want to play with Brady. He's one of the best. He's like the goat. Sure. But if you're a defensive I'm player, you're like, I'll of give it. More of yeah, I know majority. what you mean. There's I know what you mean. There's obviously some that, that, that don't want to play with other that, – and that, that's completely understandable. But I'm just – I don't think you're wrong about Stevens. 10 years. And I don't want to be right or wrong on this. I'm just saying what I well, hear, what I see. But I think I like – I don't hear one ounce yeah. of, oh, Brad Stevens, my, he is just the world's best NBA coach. I can't wait to sign with the Celtics when I hit free agency. Yeah, I mean, also, that those are... Is a huge, huge red flag on the play. Boom! Well, I also Tony think if you, hear, if, you, if you hear people saying that, it might be more of a crystal meth problem than an actual enthusiasm for the game. But I... I just have some more while I have my... Yeah, exactly. Let me juice. just... I'll just have a little bit more mm. of this sweet juice. I'm going to uh, drink the Kool-Aid. Yeah. No, I, I listen, I think, do I think Brad Stevens is the best coach out there? I don't know. I couldn't, I not necessarily, but I think you have, and I've said this before, I think you need someone to set the table and I think uh, for the team. You do. And I think, I think you have, and I mean that what a player, I think you need a player, you need a Rondo and or a Magic Johnson S type or a Chris Paul type who isn't like uh, a moral authority like Chris Paul. You need someone who need a vet to come in here. Well, we you always just... criticized Kyrie. We always did. 
But yeah. I want to give him the benefit of the doubt, actually, on this show. Okay, all right. I think Kyrie tried, and Tatum and Brown stomped all over his grave. I think that's what happened, and that's I, why I think that I think it's a big possibility. So yeah. much turmoil with the Celtics. I think Tatum and Brown told him, "F you know, f you. This is well, my we did this team, without not you. yours. Yeah. Who you think you are? We're gonna go in this direction." And Kyrie said, "Screw, I'm not gonna." Way here. Yeah, I think I it's a think combination of all that. Yeah, I think I think you're right to degrees on that. I think it definitely was part of that for him and for the rest of the team because I think I I don't even think it needs to be necessarily a veteran who needs to come in and be. I just you need someone oh. who is talent wise. You need someone a guard. You need a point guard. I mean, we have we don't necessarily like Marcus Smart is like the closest thing we have to like a true point guard, and that's right. not really. I, I love him to death, but he's not necessarily a true point guard per se. And also. I think and Tatum, I, I will say, Phil, and I said this yeah. repeatedly too. He's the fire of the team. He is, yeah. And I think they've gotten a lot. I think what you he's were talking about, he is. And I think, oh, well, he's one of, yeah, he's one who can be uh, when he's not shooting 18 times a night. But I think, I think the fire is there. When he came back from the break, that that Brooklyn Nets game, there was a lot going. Even that, uh, even the. Um, uh, the Utah game, there was a lot of fight in that in those two games. And I think it's more or less a talent thing. Now, and also just defensively. I think some some players aren't they're not getting Are there. Tatum I think and Brown just not good enough. Uh to get no, I don't think any duo like that is good enough. Even if you look at the Lakers, yeah, you have uh, like LeBron and um Anthony uh oh I can't remember his last name. Anthony Davis. Uh, Anthony Davis, thank you. Even or, or AD for the well informed, but uh, for LeBron and AD, like, uh, yeah, they're great, they're Hall of Famers, and LeBron might arguably be one of the best to ever play. But you know what? That still wasn't enough. They needed a very good bench and some decent role and a very good role players, and that's what you had. They had like a sec, they had like a really, they had a really good bench and a really good uh, B team or bench. Uh, or a second unit that came out, and that's what won them the chance. That's what won everything for them. They, uh, you know, oh, I don't. One hundred percent. But I think, listen, Tatum and Brown. I also think with Brown, him outpouring more offensively, I think it might have taken away from his defense a bit because maybe he's focusing a little bit more on um, his offense. And let's look at. I don't like. I'm not a numbers guy, but just looking at the score. If and you know when you watch the game, you look at the score. I know the NBA. I imagine, like on the whole, a lot of people are spending more, or not spending more. I'm sorry, scoring more. And you look at these like these scores for the Celtics. They're all like, you know, if they don't score past 100 and like 10, they might not win that game. It's like you're not gonna, and especially with the only you don't have a lot of, you don't have a lot of firepower for that. You know, you need to clamp down on defense. You need to clamp down. And it's just like, you, I want to see a Celtics team that can win. And this is, you know, uh, pie in the sky in a degree. But, you know, a, a, a championship team is a team that wins uh, a handful of ways. They can win by uh, just, you know, being a defensive stop. They're like being a defensive team when it, they need to be. And also winning in a shootout and also winning in a grind out. So, I mean, which you could argue that a grind out and like a defensive like standoff is very similar, if not the same thing. So, you know, I think defensively, I think they need to get back in it. And it's tough. You need, you need some other talented people. I think you need another defensive, defensive specialist either to come off the bench or to be on your starting five, or you either shift Marcus five, your starting five, get another defensive specialist you bring in off the bench and you need another wingman and or a backup um, center or, or just a point guard. I think Kemba is one of the weaker links because when he wasn't hitting shots, when he wasn't hitting some threes on uh, Sunday night against Utah, it's like, oh, you, they were wasting pose- a couple possessions. And, you know, I love Kemba, but if he, can't, like, he, if he can't deliver when you really need him to deliver, then what's the point of having him here? That's kind of, I don't know. I like device. him too. Everybody see this device? Oh, know Patrick what Chung, device. what did it tell you? What did it say? Anybody know what this device is? It's called a phone. Uh oh. Yes, it's called the phone. P H O N E. Let me pretend I'm Danny Ainge for a second. Oh no. Hey Isaiah Thomas, what's up? Yeah, do you want to play for the Celtics? Yeah, we need some help. Yeah. Can you make it tomorrow night? Sounds good. Bye. Yeah, if he's a guy you can bring off the bench, I. But he he isn't a point guard. 
Like, He's a shooting guard, like, yeah. Why? I like, don't know. What in what planet is it pride? Is it ego? Is it I don't know, maybe why I'm, can't they place a freaking phone call for a guy that isn't even playing in this league? Well, fans would go nuts. Yeah, they would, but also I think about what you just said. Because I saw a guy that cared that yeah, wanted I loved, to I loved him too. the city of Boston well. We all loved him. Like, what do you have to lose? What do you have to lose? Well, I mean, I guess a roster spot and I or... I hate when I have to yeah. think sometimes. I'm not going to cry. Excuse me. I just got to clear my voice. <laughs> it's okay. Let it out. I'm going to do it in a second. I can't stand <laughs> when I feel I can do somebody's job better. You know, and, and especially considering that I think I could do it more effectively. I hate being a know-it-all sometimes. I hate thinking that I can do it. But you know what? I'm damn well right. Well, I mean, with IT, Why once again, I can't say his whole name because I'm not allowed to. Fireable offense. It is a fireable offense. Listen, I love it Isaiah Thomas grateful. too. It is a finger in the face to every Celtics fan that has cared about this team. Yeah, I mean, I listen. I, I love it. him a lot. I just don't get it. it, it I don't. No, get that's it. fine. I really don't. I, uh, that's I, I listen. Don't. I listen. I don't know the state of. Yes, I don't I do. know how it can I, play I right now. I personally feel today, sitting in this seat, I could get the Celtics a championship team. I could build a team better than Danny Ames right well, now. Well, you know what? And that's, You're, that's you are in luck. That's you are in luck because I am on I am on my PHONE and I just got a call from the mm. front office. And looks like they need <laughs> a new face. On. They need a new face of their organization. So I know where they're going. No, I, but I just don't I hate that yeah, feeling. We say that stuff, but I don't know I if we could it. actually pull I, it I off. I don't like that feeling because it's uh, somebody else's job that they get paid for to do millions and millions of dollars, and they're the experts. And we, Joe Schmoes from Idaho here, sit here and bitch and moan about friggin' sports news in our way to Boston. Sure. And, and I forget and that you're from Idaho. I always it, forget. It's crazy. It's well, crazy sometimes that we feel that some moves are justified. Some are, some aren't. But this one right here, I mean, this is, this is, this is a borderline, like, ridiculous. Yeah, but I listen, Nick. Do we know? Line. Do it's we know? Late. Yeah, but do we know why he isn't playing on any other team? That's kind of the That's thing. The mystery. Well, That's the I mystery. Mean, and I don't think it's like a conspiracy. Maybe he just doesn't have what he used to have. And you know, you it's think just, about it's it. It's a huge need well, that this team needs. Yeah, and but the, I don't. They aren't even putting the call in. I don't know, but I, I don't disagree with like the whole like we'll just try him out, like call him and see if he still has it. Give I mean, a I don't. Day contract. Hey, Isaiah. We yeah, I don't. Out. I don't necessarily disagree what? with that, but I, but he might not have anything. I they might have already done that. They might have already done even that. reached out Maybe or done doesn't. something. Right. And the Maybe scouts right. are like, you know what? He we love I, we love him, but he doesn't have anything. He has a little bit left, but it's not more than what we can get from someone here at the moment. And I when he was here, he went through the ringer, man. He went yes, through. He, did. he he went through he you know the death of his sister. And yeah, he represented and, the city right. Yeah, but he, I he think the two of us would also say we we would make that trade for Kyrie every day of the week. Yeah, in we a heartbeat. Well in a heartbeat. We would we in a heartbeat. That any day of the week. It was a basketball yeah. move. I credit. Yeah. I credit the move that was made. But no, now that you have the opportunity yeah. to kind of do it again and bring him back at a veterans minimum or whatever the yeah. heck the deal could be a ten day contract. Just wow. wow. Yeah. No. If if he had if he had the stuff. Or even like he was at like eighty five percent to ninety percent of what he used to be, I think that'd be a nice spark off the bench. I mean, wasn't he on the Laker? No, he got signed to. He was with Cleveland, and then I forget where he went. I think he went. I forget exactly his Washington the Wizards. Washington, yeah. And yeah. is I don't know. Maybe, and also maybe, I think he was also a product of like, like, the system. Brad loved to have big guys and little guys like work in concert to kind of do that high pick and roll stuff that they do now with Kemba and Tice. Mm -hmm. And they used to do with uh, IT and um, uh, Al Horford. So, I mean, that's kind of like the Nick, that's the kind of, that's a bread and butter. It seems for Brad Stevens with those type of shooting guards, but I, I want to, I want a, a very good point guard who can spread the ball around. I mean, I want them all to spread the ball around and they were doing a lot of that against Utah on Sunday night, but they just, they just couldn't, they just Utah's a better team. 
Yeah, yeah, pretty much. Like they, and I think the Celtics could have won that game, but you know what? They just didn't have it. They just didn't. They played a. They played a good game well, too. One thing that I will hope for, Phil, for you is that the Easter Bunny leaves that nice present in your Easter basket, and maybe that that, that nice present will turn into something good. So. Oh, and I'll, I'm gonna I'll trap him. I'm gonna trap the bunny, and it's gonna Please. be delicious. Please. It's gonna be sacrilegious, no sacrilegious hollow, and delicious. Solid egg. All, all, we, all egg. we're asking for here. That Please. creature is full of delicious yeah. Easter meat. All, 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 we, all we're looking for here. So um, last thing I want to talk about before we wrap up is the Red Sox season is about two weeks away. I told you how optimistic I was last time here on the show, and everybody was surprised. I'm not Debbie Downer like I am in the Celtics and the Bruins right now. I'm, I'm, I'm actually pretty damn excited for this baseball team. There's a lot of good happening right yeah, now. Yeah, I, I and I would say, what do you mean we were surprised? They have a very good record. I know you don't want to look too much into spring training because last spring training, it was abysmal. The spring training in 2019 was not so great. Spring training in 2018 before they won a championship was pretty good. Your pitching looks actually very, very surprisingly good. They're getting great performances from Rodriguez. They're getting – a evaldi has been looking great. He's been hitting 100, 101 on the gun for velocity. Looks solid. Uh, Nick Pavetta, a guy that's going to slot in as your four or five, looks very good. Uh, Martin Perez, who they brought back for a, a bargain deal. He was actually a, a somewhat of a pleasant surprise last year. Um, he'll slot in as your number three. And you've got uh, Tanner, Tanner Wark, who's going to be an up-and-coming great pitcher. Chris Sale is going to be coming back soon. The bullpen looks much improved. They got Adam Ottavino from the Yankees, of all people. That's a shocker right there. Mm -hmm. um, I'm, I'm, I love the depth. There's a lot of players that can play multiple positions. They may not be like glitzy and glamour kind of players, but you're Marwin Gonzalez's of the world. You're Kiki Hernandez. You're um, – uh, Franchi Cordero, who they got for, believe it or not, injury prone again with the Royals, Andrew Benintendi. I like what I see. You have an awesome manager. I like what I see. I'm actually going to be surprised if they're not actually pretty damn good. I'm going to be surprised. So that's your little recap there you got for the Red Sox. Their season will begin... I want to say it's the end of March, like March. 30th I think the April first. The I think opening day is April first. Oh, it is April first. You're right. No April Fool here. Yeah. It is April first. Good call. Good call. April on that. Fools, huh? um, <laughs> last thing I'll mention before we <laughs> no wrap baseball. up: fans will, be, fans will be coming back as of next week uh, to oh, uh, yeah. limited in limited capacity. Yeah, and that'll be exciting. We'll have fans for opening day at Fenway. The world is getting better, gentlemen. It is. And Massachusetts, uh, the general public will be able to get their vaccine or eligible on April 19th yep. in Massachusetts. I got my first dose yep. last week. So. Oh, there you go. Amazing. Any there side effects? Nope. None. Well, from what we've heard tonight, well, we'll see. Maybe I need I a nice shot of B12 in me after what I've had to deal with with the Bruins and the Celtics. So. Oh, uh, I guess just uh, it was something we didn't bring up and I actually was reading when we were trying to figure out how many uh, of the you know mm. the signings that were made by the Patriots, Patrick Chung actually announced his retirement. So he, he was a holdout this past oh, year, he? but he did. He uh, what well, just happened like to, like hand, that, like a couple hours ago. Uh, he Patrick wrote like Chung? Patrick Chung. So I mean, and he'd been in the league for around. I forget if he was well, with that us. Freed for up some money. Eleven for the years, Patriots, I believe. I think even might... more money than they already had. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but we no, it's... have uh, breaking news into the Face the Facts uh, lovely oh, show here. There you go. There is an update tonight on the Bruins game. Oh. After further testing and contact tracing, as of now, tonight's game against the Buffalo Sabres will go on as scheduled. So uh -huh. hopefully that will happen, and we shall see from there. Interesting. So um, I guess there was some COVID protocol thing that was going on, so... Um, and the other news I'm um, just getting from Adam Schefter on the football front, Mitchell Trubisky has signed with the Buffalo Bills. So he'll be the backup over there. Oh, to, weird. Uh, Josh. The yeah. Josh Allen. Yeah. Yeah. Josh Allen. So it's like Nick. So Nick Foles is the, is the number one with the bears right now. Is uh, that Nick? Nick. Yeah. Foles? Yeah. 
Yep. And I just see from Jeff Howe that uh, Patrick Chung has announced his retirement. So, yeah, no, that's. Uh, I thank mean, you, Patrick Chung, for, yeah, um, can, for all, he for was all, in the, all that you've done. Yeah, he was here for, he's been here for a while. He was here, his rookie contract, and then he went to Philly. Then I remember him coming back. And he was a big part of uh, winning those three, uh, going to four Super Bowls and winning three of them. Uh, oh, actually, I think he might have even, even gone to five. He might have in like 2011. I'm not sure. But um, yeah, he was a big part of that. And he broke his arm, I think, in the uh, – he pulled a Rodney Harrison. I think he broke his arm in the either the L.A. or the Philly one. It might have been the Philly one. Uh, but you know what? It Yeah, he's been – a consummate patriot. I've always loved him, and he been always hit hard. Yeah, he's always, been a pro. Always, always, has, always has done a nice job. And he so. thanked everyone in his last social media thing. Sorry, last he thanked everyone, uh, like even the the, the people who worked there, I, I the custodial everyone. fact. I, I what? Everyone. No, well, no, he 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 he, th- he thanked everyone, like the custodial staff and everyone who worked at the like at the complex. So he, he seemed like a you know. He realizes everyone contributes at every level, and that's the kind of guy you want, or person you want to be on your team and to to root for. Frankly, so yeah, that's all I got. Well, that'll do it here for another episode of Face the Facts. You had a lot of things going on in sports, a lot of things, and um, more things to come for the Patriots, and uh, hopefully some good stuff will happen with some changes with the Celtics and the Bruins. And then uh, we wish the Red Sox the best when their season will begin shortly. We will see you again next time. Goodbye.